Welcome to the Wizards of Amazon podcast. This is your host, Carlos Alvarez. And on today's show, I have a very special guest who I initially met in San Francisco at Seller Growth Summit, Alec Valencia, who's a merchant develop development manager at Rakuten. What's up, Alec? Hey, how's it going, Carlos? Thank you for having me on today. Um, looking forward to talking about Rakuten and you know, everything related to prosperous selling and international trade. Absolutely, man. Um, it's been what I think. I think the San Francisco event was the last event anybody did before it just got real. Yeah, you know, it, it's kind of a funny story. I almost wasn't able to attend that. Um, you know, we were notified. I, I think maybe two weeks prior to that, um, you know, as to what was going on in the world, and um, you know, kind of preparing to adjust to the reality of that, and uh, you know, canceling events and. Um, some of our overseas travels. So yeah, I was really fortunate that we were able to put that together and then, um, you know, was able to meet you and some of the other speakers there. But yeah, I think that was probably the last event, what, maybe three, three months ago, I think it was. Yeah, something like that. I remember about to fly out and my wife's letting me know. She's like, babe, I think San Francisco just like locked down or something. Like it was, it was, it was just getting like really real where things were going to be mandatory imposed. We're recording this for anyone listening, uh, May 14th at 219 p.m. Eastern. I, I say it that specifically because things are that fluid and changing on who's locked down and who's not. I'm currently uh, in self quarantine uh, for a little over a month now. But um, they're not you guys are not listening to this to hear about self quarantine and COVID. I'm sure you have your <laughs> fill of the media. Um, Alec, talk to me. How long have you? First of all, merchant development manager that that sounds heavy. That, that sounds like a lot right there. What, what does the merchant <laughs> development manager do for Rakuten and how long have you worked with Rakuten? So actually this month, um, it's my anniversary. So I'm actually celebrating uh, my first year at Rakuten. So um, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So merchant development manager, I think in a lot of ways, these are synonymous with, um, you know, similar roles, business development manager, um, you know, account manager, consultant, um, you know, with the emphasis on, on sales and development. So merchant development manager specifically for this role is geared towards um, working with merchants, working with um, sellers, brands, retailers, um, you know, interested parties that are currently doing um, some type of you know, buying and selling, whether that's traditional retail, brick and mortar stores, um, you know, Amazon sellers online, um, or you know, other sellers in their respective countries selling through different marketplaces. So I specifically work with um, you know, uh, online sellers, sellers looking to enter into e-commerce that want to sell specifically to Japan. So I give sort of, um, you know, my guidance and, um, you know, advising as to what to prepare to enter into the market, um, you know, company assessment as to, uh, you know, if they're capable, um, you know, do they have the proper resources in place to conduct e-commerce um, at a global scale? Um, and specifically, would it meet those needs for the Japanese market and fall within our guidelines as the marketplace? Perfect. And what, what about, what about, I don't, I don't know if you, you touched on this, but what about Rakuten selling in the U S yeah, Rakuten selling in the U S. So that's actually, um, our, our fifth marketplace. So, um, you know, we started in Japan in 1997, um, you know, as a, as a pure marketplace, so third party marketplace. And since then we've actually expanded to uh, Taiwan, France and Germany. And the U S is actually one of our um, you know, newer marketplaces that we opened, um, kind of in the early two thousands. And so, um, yeah, Rakuten.com uh, would be the, um, you know, American entity, uh, Rakuten.com slash shop. That's where you can go into the, uh, the U.S. marketplace. And this is actually connected with um, Rakuten Rewards. So we have a cashback uh, reward service. Um, you know, as a consumer, you can basically download a, a Chrome plugin. And whenever you go on to a website, like maybe Nike, you know, Lululemon, um, you'll be able to see that this site is offering a percentage of cash back. So maybe 2%. I think Nike today is at 12%. And, you know, as a consumer, you can basically, um, you know, go ahead and enable that cash back and through your shopping journey, um, basically earn 12% um, um, back on whatever you spend. So Rakuten.com uh, for the U.S. is more focused on, you know, cash back. And it's a marketplace for, um, you know, U.S. sellers to sell to the U.S. population. Um, you know, American customers. Nice. I didn't know about it. What was the name of that app? So Rakuten um, Rewards. Um, you can just search for that on Google. Um, it's a, you know, application that lets you basically um, find out 
uh, the brands and retailers that you shop through, um, you know, if they're within our, our affiliate network and offer that reward. So as an example, like, you know, we travel a lot or, you know, we did previously. So whenever I would go on Expedia.com, um, you know, I would enable cashback so I could, you know, get, get some kind of, um, you know, some kind of percentage back as to what I spend on my travel. Um, you know, I, I like exercise. So I do shop quite a bit through Nike and um, you know, other retailers like that. So right now during COVID-19, especially there's a lot of great sales, but you know, why not also get some cash back? Um, you know, and it's, it's free. So <laughs> I think it's kind of a cool service to check out. Yeah, definitely. I wrote down, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go get it right after this, uh, right after this yeah. recording. The, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I have to say also, I want to focus a little bit on, on the U S um, sure, sure. for a bit, but b before that, I wanted to say that, uh, Japan on the Amazon side is mm. one of my best international channels um, on Amazon. And when I when I heard you present, I don't want to misquote you, so I'm going to let you let you do it. <laughs> but when I when I heard you present, it, it, was it true that Japan is actually the strongest channel or the strongest location for Rakuten's presence? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're a, a homegrown country uh, company, so you know. That is our area of expertise. You know, that's where our ecosystem, um, you know, the infrastructure is really, uh, you know, we, we laid the groundwork for, um, you know, the past 23 years. So um, I think, yeah, for us, Rakuten is a, you know, household name, um, similar to Coca-Cola. And, uh, you know, when you think of shopping online, when you think of doing, um, you know, banking, travel, you know, Rakuten, um, you know, kind of has some sort of a, um, you know, channel for that. You know, to really complement um, you know customers' lives. So yeah, I think Rakuten, where uh, we are, you know, a Japanese company first and foremost, absolutely. Okay, great. What about um? Let's dive a little bit into like back in the U.S. I I, I organize an, the the largest Amazon seller meetup group in the world, and my my goal in this after hearing you present on Rakuten is that I want. I want more people in my group and just more sellers in general to be aware that that Rakuten is actually a very profitable channel to, mm. to, to sell on. What, what does it look like for getting started uh, for an Amazon seller? You know, what types of sellers, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the different selling models on Amazon, but mm -hmm. say private label, wholesale, arbitrage, mm. you know, which, which one of those are not a good fit on Rakuten? Who would do better? How do you get started? What, what do you need to get started selling in the U S first? Yeah, I think, you know, first off, uh, you know, if we look at our, our cross-border program, um, you know, to apply, you know, the requirements um, at this moment are that you be a incorporated U.S. company or a Japanese company. Um, for entities outside um, of those two countries, um, we do have another way of onboarding, um, but that will require the use of a um, you know, merchant of records. So working with a service partner that offers that kind of service that would basically apply on your behalf and, um, you know, sign a contract directly with brackets. And so if you're selling from another country, um, you know, be it, uh, let's say maybe um, you know, Thailand or, you know, maybe you're selling from Canada and, you know, you need access to selling to Japan, but, um, you know, you don't have a, a legal way to apply at this moment. Um, you know, that's one way to onboard. But as it pertains to the U.S., um, you know, it's a pretty simple process. Um, you know, most of our, um, our inquiries come in through our landing page, um, you know, for Rakuten. And, um, you know, we just ask some basic questions online as to sort of, you know, what type of company are you, um, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, capacity, you know, number of employees, uh, number of SKU that you sell, what, what product first and foremost is, is planned for sale. And then if you have some kind of presence online, so if you have a Shopify site, if you have an Amazon site. Um, so, you know, that basically all kind of accumulates into, um, you know, the leads that, you know, I contact and reach out to and evaluate on a daily basis. So I'm looking at company size, I'm looking at, uh, you know, products planned for sale, and also looking at, you know, revenue and also forecasted revenue. So, you know, what is your current revenue as a company? Are you a million dollar company? Are you less than a million dollar company? And what are some of your, you know, forecasted goals and targets for doing online business? So I think, yeah, first and foremost, just incorporation. Um, but, you know, who sells on Rakuten? It's really um, kind of a myriad of sellers. So we have, um, you know, first and foremost, you know, brands, we have the manufacturers, um, but we do have a significant amount of resellers. Um, I think, um, you know, it's fairly common to find on Rakuten and also Amazon, um, you know, private sellers or even, um, you know, companies that have found success uh, reselling other popular brands, you know, national brands specifically, 
Um, you know, one tactic might be is that you're a reseller of national brands, but you also have a private label brand that you want to kind of take off. You want to get some more eyeballs on. And so by listing those national brands in conjunction with your private label that you're trying to, you know, bring more awareness to, you can generate interest that way by bringing the traffic in, looking for these national branded items, these major products, and then saying, oh, hey, wait, you know, what's this private label product? It looks similar to something that I already know and something that I already used, um, but it's at a fantastic value. So I think that's a lot of ways that you can not only grow your, you know, resale of, you know, known items, but also bring some new interest to these private label items that you maybe have developed yourself, or maybe you're reselling on behalf of somebody else. Nice. Uh you, you mentioned uh, evaluating, I guess, the applicants who are, are wanting to sell. So this is a, you're submitting an application to get approved to sell on the platform. Is, is, is the person going to be in contact, say, with you or somebody on your team? Or is it all done by email? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, where the bulk of our inquiries come from, um, you know, outside of referrals or outside of, you know, just one-to-one -one meetings would be, um, you know, just visiting our landing page uh, for Sell in Japan. So when a uh, you know, interested person goes on there to you know, request information, uh, there's just a few questions. I think there's about 12 or 13 questions that just ask some general questions about your business. Uh, when you hit submit, that will go to our onboarding team, which I'm part of. So either myself or another manager will basically get in touch with you. Uh, right away, you'll get an automated response saying, hey, thank you for your inquiry. We're processing um, you know, your application uh, for review. And then you know, either myself or someone else would basically get in contact and say, hey, you know, this looks great. You know, let's, um, you know, plan some time to discuss on email, uh, maybe have a short phone call. Um, you know, I personally really enjoy having web meetings. Uh, that way we can kind of, you know, share screen, um, you know, share URLs, you know, any relative information as to what, um, you know, the company's background might be, or maybe what some, um, some questions might be, you know, some, some struggles as to, you know, how do I get started or, you know, any apprehension. I look to kind of, uh, you know, alleviate that um, by providing some, some guidance in, in that result. Now, now, obviously, the bigger, the better, I'm assuming here, the bigger the company, the bigger the revenues, the more attractive it's going to be for any platform, I'm assuming Rakuten is no different. But what, what, about the, what about the solopreneur with no employees, they've just gotten started, they're hungry, um, mm -hmm. they have a handful of products to sell. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the chances of that type of person or company uh, mm -hmm. successfully being able to sell on Rakuten? I think that could be definitely a challenge, you know, um, you know, at the moment we don't support um, sole proprietorships. So, you know, if you are just kind of a, you know, independent business owner that, you know, is looking to do online business, uh, you know, my first. This would be a corporation. I'm sorry. This would be somebody oh, who incorporated, yeah. they have a corporation, but at the end of the day, I was just saying solopreneur, meaning they're the mm -hmm. CEO, CMO, they package the boxes, they do, mm -hmm. they wear all the hats in the company. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, just from my, my personal experience, um, you know, a, a cousin of mine actually, um, you know, owns her own um, children's clothing apparel company. And so somebody like that, who I do talk to on a regular basis, uh, we've kind of gone back and forth about it. And um, I think one of her, um, you know, most critical resources would be finding somebody to partner with her to provide the shop management, so to provide the, um, you know, required um, Japanese to navigate the back end. So, you know, Rakuten has a similar, um, you know, um, it's called Rakuten Merchant Server, RMS. This is very similar to how other marketplaces work like um, Amazon Seller Central. So this is where you go to check your, um, you know, your conversion, your sales, um, your performance metrics. And so my cousin who, you know, I think is a fairly capable online seller, mostly she sells through, through Amazon as well as through Instagram. Um, you know, her socials are very, uh, very, very uh, you know, crucial part of her selling. As far as how she'd be able to do that to Japan, the first question would be, can you ship internationally? You know, most of her customers are domestic within the U.S., within California. So, you know, opening up herself to possibly working with a company like DHL, like Yamato Transport, um, like USPS International to, you know, be able to finish the, the last mile you know, to the customers in Japan. And the second point would be, um, you know, obviously, as more orders start to come in, as more sales start to accrue, do you have, um, you know, the capacity to, you know, pack, pick and ship those items yourself? Um, would you maybe need to bring somebody else on board to help with that, with that management? Um, and then the last thing would be, um, again, yeah, Japanese, you're selling to the Japanese market, you're selling to Japanese consumers, um, you know, they have a fairly high standard 
as to the level of um, information that's provided, that it be accurate, that it be, you know, native, and that it be informative. So, you know, is she able to take this great content that she has from her Instagram page and, you know, again, consolidate that and rework that in Japanese so that it appeals in the way the Japanese are used to being uh, marketed towards, right? You know, a lot of graphics, a lot of text, uh, you know, imagery is really big in Japan. So localizing her content, localizing content from her respective Amazon, her respective Instagram pages into Japanese, and then having either somebody on hand, like a freelancer that she can just ping and say, hey, um, you know, I would like for you to revamp some of my product listings. Um, I want to tap into the SEO and I want to, you know, refine that so customers can find my products easier. So having somebody on board that can, you know, speak, um, you know, read, translate Japanese and, you know, provide that kind of advising is, is definitely crucial to that operation. So I think she probably checks two out of three of those boxes. Um, the third one, again, working with a freelancer, um, working with, you know, somebody that she can trust to convey her brand's message and help with the, you know, kind of the ongoing, uh, you know, daily operations for the shop is, is definitely crucial. So, so, so two things I'm, I'm taking away from that is that mm-hmm. I'm learning here too. So the, the, the model of, of shipping and logistics is more of a merchant fulfilled model uh, where yeah. seller needs to fill it, fulfill everything, not sending it to a distribution center like an FBA center. And second, um, what, what you were saying about the logistics and the translation and whatnot for the Japanese market makes total sense. But what about right. some of the challenges that this, you know, one man show court, one man or one woman mm. show corporation would have <laughs> if they wanted to sell in the U.S.? Yeah, you know, if, um, if you're wanting to do business from the U.S. to Japan, um, again, I think it'd just be a matter of understanding, you know, what's involved. Uh, I think at a high level, you know, Amazon's more of a, a closed system where, you know, those resources are provided and they're accessible to you, um, whereas Rakuten is more of an open system. So you have more options, more availability, um, you know, to provide these services. But yeah, I think, um, you know, the takeaway would be that Rakuten is more merchant centric. So um, you are, you know, selling to Japan through Rakuten's channel, um, you know, as an independent seller. And, you know, you're responsible for some of those ongoing day-to-day operations, um, you know, some of the logistics, right? So shipping either cross-border from your warehouse in Los Angeles, uh, maybe in Miami, and then, um, you know, being able to provide, you know, confirmation emails, uh, you know, responding to customer inquiries as to their orders, um, giving them feedback after, you know, post-purchase, hey, thank you for coming in today, thank you for buying from my shop, you know, keeping that conversation going to hopefully turn them into, you know, loyal customers, you know, repeat traffic. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, the majority of our sellers, you know, for this program and the majority of sellers that I work with, um, they really do vary in scale. So some of them are small, medium-sized businesses. Some of them are startups that found success on Kickstarter and, uh, you know, have maybe only 10 to 20 SKUs. But these are hero items. You know, these are items for them that are now well-established, well-known items that, you know, um, there is some sort of following, some sort of awareness online on social, um, or even just items that, you know, could be everyday household items. You know, um, I think it's just a matter of, do you have a strategy in mind for selling? And does your product have some kind of penetration, some kind of awareness, not just on, you know, uh, Rakuten, but also on Amazon Japan, Yahoo Japan, I know other, other e-commerce channels, other marketplaces that, you know, we might be able to kind of hone in on that traffic and uh, bring more awareness to your, your brand and, and generate sales. I muted myself because uh, the dog's in the background. So here I am talking and you're looking at me and you're like, <laughs> yeah, Oh God, what's, what's a, going on? <laughs> I thought there was a glitch on my end, but okay, great, great. No, 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 it's all good. You handled that really good though, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So the, in your experience, do you work with a lot of Amazon sellers? Like, is there a lot of Amazon sellers that decide, you know, I want to get into Rakuten. I, I, I've, I've found a lot of success on Amazon. What? Oh, yeah. Okay. What, yeah, what, absolutely. Like? Absolutely. What do yeah, you see no, the learning curve to be? You know, I'm, I'm American. You know, I, I, um, I've been on Amazon, I think, since maybe 2001, um, you know, buying products from Amazon. I, I think as a, you know, um, you know, American as a, as a local person here, 
that is kind of your first foray into online sales, um, you know, shopping as a consumer, as well as I think, you know, maybe the first place that you think of to begin your e-commerce journey. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, just by nature of where we live, um, you know, being in the US, Amazon is typically the first marketplace that you look to, to, uh, you know, start your foray into, into business online. And so I think from that, we have a lot of, um, you know, maybe legacy sellers, sellers that have been on there for the past 10, 20 years, um, that really are, you know, experienced into how they can, um, you know, grow their sales, whether they're selling their own items, whether they're reselling other items. Um, so they have a really good understanding of that. But we also have um, sellers that are maybe two years old, three years old, um, you know, company-wise that have just got a taste of e-commerce online on the U.S. And similar to your own, um, you know, experience, Carlos, they found that they're getting quite a bit of, um, you know, interest from Japan, quite a lot of orders, a lot of sales from Japan. Um, you know, paying the high tax, paying the high shipping to get it to their country in Japan. And their next, you know, um, you know, kind of a lightning bolt moment is, oh, hey, why don't I just enable Amazon Japan and be able to tap into that network directly and use FBA and, you know, use the translation services to get the products, you know, um, understood there. So I think similar to yourself, the majority of Amazon sellers that do contact us have seen success in year one and year two on Amazon Japan and say, look, I know that Amazon Japan is just part of the, you know, um, the spectrum in terms of the market share. You know, Rakuten is that other half. Why don't I maximize my sales, um, you know, in Japan by selling on both? So, you know, you can look at, um, you know, the market share as Rakuten, Amazon Japan, Yahoo Japan. Those are the biggest B2C marketplaces right now. Um, there's a ton of other C2C marketplaces like Macari, um, you know, Rakuma by Rakuten, you know, where you can sell in that sense. But as far as, you know, B2C selling directly to consumers, um, you know, as a business, um, it's definitely Rakuten, Amazon Japan, Yahoo Japan. And that's the conversation. And those are, those are the three big giants, you know, in that regard. So yeah, I think a lot of the times it's just, Hey, you know, why do I maximize my sales channel and, you know, expand to Rakuten or I'm on Rakuten in Japan. Why don't I expand to Amazon Japan to try to, you know, really maximize uh, the number of eyeballs and number of shoppers and um, you know just have a more well-rounded business i think okay well I'm, i, I want to pivot uh pivot for a second into the platform itself so sure. as a seller um what what does this resemble more of to someone that's not seen the platform more of a you have 10 different pages of the same product that somebody's selling or more of a mm. like, like an ebay if you will or more mm. of a centralized, there's a single product detail page mm. you know, tied to a UPC of a product, and then there's mm. sellers listing against that one page. Well, what is that like? What's the experience like? So the experience, I mean, um, you know, when you go into Rakuten, um, you know, first off, you're, you're greeted with um, a host of information. So there'll be, you know, banners, um, advertisements running that are displaying um, sale events that we're currently hosting. So, you know, Rakuten's really big on events and campaigns. It's kind of one of the unique, um, you know, factors about our platform is that we constantly have these time sales, marathon sales, seasonal sales, uh, you know, similar to kind of what you might see on Amazon during Prime Day, but that is super sale for Rakuten. So rather than a single day of shopping, we have, you know, four super sales that occur every year. So, you know, every four quarters, there's going to be opportunity to sell and an opportunity to you know, bring in new customers. So that's immediately what I see is that right now I'm seeing spring sales, I'm seeing um, you know, stay at home sales, I'm, I'm seeing uh, you know, a lot of advertisements you know, and uh, you know, ways to get points, ways to get you know, percentages back for sales. When you scroll down kind of towards the middle, you'll see a list of uh, you know, products that you might have browsed previously. You'll see all the different categories and genres organized by ranking. So you'll see what are the top selling items by day, what are some of the top selling items for apparel, for food, for electronics? And when I go into the search and I look for a product, so let's say I'm looking for a specific type of headphones or a phone case, depending on what I use in the SEO, whether it's um, you know, English, whether it's um, you know, Japanese, um, obviously Japanese will pro you know, provide more results. If I look for those headphones in Japanese, I'm going to see this result of um, you know, basically everybody, manufacturers, you know, official shop pages, I'm going to see resellers, I'm going to see, um, you know, third party sellers. Um, but I won't know until I actually go into the shop 
and look into the company details as to, you know, is this Nike's official website? Is this a reseller of Nike that's based in Omaha, Nebraska? Or is this a local seller who's based in Tokyo, not far from me? So, you know, immediately you're seeing the product first. And when you click into the shop, you're gonna see a, um, you know, customized layout. So there's no, um, you know, specific template or specific format for how a shop can be designed. I think that's one of the unique things about Rakuten is that, you know, we empower the sellers to really take hold of their brand and, um, you know, control the aesthetic, you know, how they, how they merchandise their products, how they represent their products. So a top page for Nike might be completely different for a competitor like Adidas, might be completely different for, you know, Joe Sporting Goods, who's, you know, a private seller from the U.S. who's trying to capitalize on, you know, the sports and outdoor trend. So right away, the top pages for every shop will be different. They're all unique. Um, nothing is static. So I think Amazon, you're used to going, to going in and seeing a very orderly, a very structured, um, you know, um, product view. And you really only think of the shop or the vendor um, when it comes to selecting the, the price or the availability for shipping. You know, hey, uh, I see that, you know, Carlos, you know, provides uh, two-day shipping for Prime. And he also has the best price. So you're more so shopping with that in mind is, you know, the, the price competition and, you know, who has the best feed time. With Amazon, or with, sorry, with Rakuten, <laughs> with Rakuten, you're more concerned with, you know, the shop. You know, what kind of shop is this? What kind of, what kind of vendor is this? You know, can I trust this vendor? Is this, a, you know, a legitimate source, um, you know, for products? And in addition to having good, you know, um, you know sales, you know, a good retail price for me, the customer, um, can they also satisfy the shipping requirements that I might need? Do they have the information that I require for this product? So I think, you know, on Amazon, as a comparison, you know, you maybe have three to four pictures, you know, maybe some details about the product. You know, now with, you know, their, their uh, you know, A plus content, you can see uh, more information, more pictures, maybe a video, you know, Rakuten, that's sort of, that's the expectation is that, if I'm shopping for a product, I'm going to get detailed information about the product and I'm going to get, you know, um, you know, some kind of a value. You know, I'm going to be able to take away something from this product listing that it's more than just a product. Um, you're selling an experience. No, I, I, I'm sitting here. I just have a, I want you to <laughs> you're keep going and I just have all these questions yeah. that are popping it up. Like, so let, let's hit back up for a second. Um, yeah. what you mentioned, and you, you said it really quick, but you mentioned, let, let's use Nike. Somebody goes in there and they shot, they're, sure. they're looking for a Nike shoe. Now, sure. initially, they don't know if it's Nike themselves selling it. You mentioned right. storefront, a third party seller. Right. What are right. the differences of those three? And how difficult is it to get one of those statuses? Is one better than the other? Yes. I mean, as a brand, you know, somebody like Nike, who, you know, does have an official shop on Rakuten, um, you know, that was a company decision, right? To, you know, um, further grow their presence in Japan. You know, they have, you know, obviously offline shops, you know, Nike stores, um, you know, throughout Japan, but, you know, going online and setting the, the standard as, hey, this is Nike's official shop, come and buy our products, we're the manufacturer. Um, you know, something that you might expect from that shop as a customer would be, okay, they're always gonna have the latest and greatest items. They're always gonna have the newest items, um, you know, specific to that locale. If I'm just looking for a Nike running shoe, if I'm looking for the new Pegasus 37 that just came out, let's say, and I'm a Japanese customer, and right now I'm, I'm stuck inside and I can't go outside, I have the option to search for, you know, Pegasus 37 through Rakuten. And, you know, I have my choice of either buying it from Nike, if it's available, or buying it from a reseller, buying it from another company. Um, there's a lot of sporting goods shops in Japan that do have online presences on Rakuten. So, um, you know, that's kind of the same logic as if you're buying brick and mortar. So I shop a lot through Running Warehouse. Um, I'm a runner myself. So Running Warehouse typically has um, some type of a discount, some type of a lower retail price than the actual manufacturers do. So my last running shoe is actually a pair of Nike. And I found that I could get a greater deal from this, you know, um, other retailer, not official Nike retailer, but um, you know, this shop called Running Warehouse and save money. So it's the same thing in that if I'm looking on Rakuten for a specific item, for a product, 
Um, obviously, I am concerned with the price. You know, I do want to find a good deal. Um, you know, storefronts can also apply additional point incentives. So points are really big on, on Rakuten. So there's a Rakuten point. So, you know, every 100 yen is, is one point, basically 1% of that sale. So if this shop is offering more points, then I might shop at their storefront over another so that I can get more points and I can redeem this at a later time. So I think, yeah, it's mainly the pricing. Can I bring in more customers on a more competitive price than the manufacturer, than the retailer? And also the, you know, the, the design. You know, I think when you go into a shop, if I'm looking at Nike's official site and I'm looking at, you know, a reseller's site, does this have the same information? Does this have the same type of things that I'm looking to understand? You know, when I shop for athletic products, specifically running shoes online, I'm reading a lot of information. I'm reading blogs, I'm watching YouTube, and I'm also looking at the, you know, the shop, if it's going to be running warehouse, if it's going to be, you know, Dick Sporting Goods, if it's Nike itself, who has the most content that's going to reassure me that, this purchase is going to be, um, you know, up to my standards and that I'm not going to, you know, think of returning the item. I'm going to be you know, satisfied in this process. So, you know, the storefront, again, on Rakuten, you control the storefront, you control the aesthetic, you're able to put the content that you want to get in touch with customers to make that first impact, that first touch point. And the product listings, again, you have ownership as to um, providing additional insights, providing additional information to satisfy that need for understanding so that the customers feel confident in purchasing and saying, yeah, you know what, Carlos's shop, you know, it had excellent information. There's even a video talking about it. Hey, you know, this is great. I want to shop from it. And then also looking at reviews. So, you know, if I'm looking at Nike, you know, I think it's probably assumed that they might have good reviews, positive reviews, you know, because they're a large company, they have a large operation. But if I'm looking at a reseller of Nike that has just as many four-star reviews, you know, five-star reviews, and have, uh, you know, some comments saying, hey, this, this merchant shipped me this product in two days, or hey, you know, this merchant had a delay due to COVID-19, but they responded to my emails, and they even tucked a little note inside the product and said, hey, thank you for supporting us at this time. You know, um, you've really been a big help. So, you know, I think personalization goes a long way in that too. Yeah, you, you, my, my next question had to do with reviews. So you mentioned that there is product reviews. Is there also seller reviews? And is there any other absolutely. rating system for trustworthiness or social validation? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you know, internally at Rakuten, there is an expectation, um, you know, as to, you know, what the shops should be ranked at, what, what the shops, um, you know, star rating should be. Um, you know, that's something that we don't disclose publicly, but there is an understanding is that, you know, when you're a merchant, um, you should provide excellent customer service and you should have a, you know, a high ranking as a store, um, you know, as a result of that. So, you know, reviews for products should be satisfactory. Um, you know, if there is anything that, um, you know, could be seen as, um, you know, something that you can improve on, you know, immediately get in touch with that customer, let them know, um, you know, provide condolences if there is an issue with the product, um, an issue with the shipping. So, yeah, I think, you know, there is a high standard for, um, you know, maintaining, um, you know, not just your shop's rating, you know, the star rating, but also the customer reviews that, you know, the customers are satisfied and you don't give them any opportunity to, you know, say anything negative about the shop. And if there is something that, you know, comes about um, as a result of, you know, maybe yourself or indirectly, it's always good to resolve that. So, yeah, I think the star ratings, um, you know, the reviews, those are all just as relevant to the customer uh, when shopping from the shop. So, you know, hey, does the store have a good reputation? Um, oh, I see that they're from, you know, overseas. They're from the U.S. Um, now you're going to be even more susceptible to criticism because you're unknown. And so I think, again, providing, um, you know, good customer service and providing, you know, a fair uh, lead time for shipping goes a long way to, um, to really, uh, I think, uh, meet the expectations of the, of the customers in Japan that, you know, really don't have, any awareness of, of your company or of your products. So, so, so shoppers, so shoppers on Rakuten in Japan, they do, they, they do know by looking at your, your seller storefront or, or however you're set up that yeah. you are from the U S like you're mentioning right. where your inventory is located. Right. Exactly. So, um, you know, immediately when you go into the storefront, um, at the top of every page, there'll be a, um, you know, a corporate information where you can basically select and see, you know, Hey, this is Carlos's shop. Um, based in Miami, 
and um, there'll be contact information there and email um, a phone number so that way I can get in touch and say hey Carlos you know I uh, just reached out I felt that my product has been shipped um, you know can I expect any delays at this time due to COVID-19 something like that and then within the product listing um, you know let's say that you're selling again on the topic of Nike because today's my running day so I'm just thinking about when I can get out to, <laughs> to start exercising um, you know as allotted by the city of California um, that on the listing for the product um, again for the for the Pegasus 37, let's say, um, I'll see the selling price, you know, the retail price, I'll see the point allotment, so um, how many points we're gonna earn from shopping, buying the specific product, and then just below that, I'll see the shipping. So I'll see how many days it takes to ship, maybe two to three days for shipping, and then the uh, you know, country of origin um, as to where that's gonna be coming from. So whether it's gonna be from the manufacturer, um, you know, from China, whether it's gonna be directly from my warehouse in Los Angeles, um, I'll have that insight. So, um, you know, if I'm just shopping through stores during an event, like I think shop hopping is really popular during, um, you know, our, our super sales, you know, to try to accrue more points. So I'm going to shop through Carlos's shop. I'm going to shop through Nike shop. I'm going to shop through different shops to get multipliers, to get points, to get more, more, uh, you know, more points in my, in my wallet. Um, I'm maybe not as concerned with the locale, with where it's shipping from. I'm more so just thinking, is this product on sale? Am I going to get a discount for this product? And then later I can consolidate and review and say, okay, so I purchased from three shops selling from Japan, three domestic merchants, and I've got two that are coming from the U.S., one from Miami, one from Los Angeles. So I think the, the incentive, again, during shopping events or during campaigns is I want to shop for products that I want, that I need. Um, you know, if I do have any hesitation in buying, then I can go back in and look at the company information to kind of evaluate is this a Japanese company? Is this an overseas company? And will there be any um, known delays, expected delays, um, you know, with the shipping lead time? All right, so let, let, let's get into this one final part and then I'm gonna start wrapping this up to be respectful of your time. <laughs> I think this, is, this might go hand in hand with, I don't know if this is two questions and that is, okay. it has to do with payment. So, so when you sell something, how quickly do you get paid as far as you've received the money? And that, that kind of brings in banking. So mm. somebody from the U S with a corporation that wants to be paid for their sales, um, on Rakuten that for sales in Japan, mm. um, what, what kind of banking situation needs to be set up to be able to accomplish that? So what's nice about, you know, our cross border program is that you don't need to be a registered, you know, Japanese entity. You don't need to register your company information in Japan, the product information in Japan. Um, that goes for banking as well. So, you know, there's no need to set up a, a Japanese bank account. Um, we work with a company called Ping Pong. So Ping Pong provides the, um, the vendor remittance. So they're, you know, a global payout uh, solution. Um, you know, originally from China, they do have an office nearby us here in San Mateo, but they're going to be your remittance partner. So when Rakuten Inc. Um, issues you payment. So again, payout is uh, net 20 days. So you'll get paid on the 15th and 30th of every month. When Rakuten issues that payout, um, ping pong is going to be there to basically support you in transferring it from Japanese yen into US dollars or whatever your currency might be. If you're in Europe, it might be euros. If in the UK, it might be pounds. So yeah, basically you get paid out, um, you know, from Rakuten and then ping pong is able to, you know, finish that, that final transaction for you. And that's something that you set up um, uh, for free. So the ping pong account uh, would be set up uh, you know, during your, your account opening. And um, that's how you get paid. Yeah, Ping Pong's an amazing company too. It looks like they're going to be, uh, we're, we're, we're collaborating. It looks like they're going to be sponsoring the, the meetup group as well. What, oh, excellent. What, about, what about frequency of payments? So if I sell something, this, uh, if I sold something this morning mm -hmm. on Rakuten, when mm -hmm. would I see those funds and be able to do something with them in my account? Um, yeah, so again, the payout, um, it's basically the, the first, you know, uh, first through 15th and the 15th to the 30th. So basically if you were to sell, um, every two weeks, every two weeks, <laughs> every two weeks pretty much. And that, um, you know, you'll be notified, uh, you know, through Rakuten, um, through Rakuten bill pay. That's where you're going to monitor and see your, um, you know, your payments, um, also your, your, uh, payments and charges to Rakuten. So yeah, um, you're basically going to get paid for whatever sales that you accrue from the first and second half of the month, uh, twice every month in that 20 days. So you wouldn't be able to get, you know, the, uh, you know, the payout immediately from today's sale. Um, it would be happening on uh, the 20th. Okay. Um, 
again, uh, that was amazing. I, I feel like I could ask you a bazillion more questions about that. I didn't even <laughs> touch on, you know, how, how to market your stuff and differentiate and is yeah. there ads. Is there any of that? I feel like we could go on forever, but to be respectful of your time, what, um, how can somebody reach out to you to either get an account set up, ask some questions uh, about Rakuten and see if they're a good fit? Uh, what's the best way to, to get a hold of you? Yeah, you know, I think if, um, you know, there's a lot of people, uh, you know, listening right now on the podcast, um, you know, for Wizard of Amazon, there's just a, a lot of a lot of inquiries immediately. I think um, you guys can just contact us directly through our landing page. Um, that's literally just um, for, you know, when you search for sell in Japan, um, that should pop up. Um, I believe the actual URL is rakuten.co.jp slash EC slash sell in Japan. And so that's a way if, um, you know, you're thinking to get in contact, um, you know, a bit more formally, you can send an inquiry there and either myself or someone else will get in contact with you um, or just directly, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> I got nowhere to go, you know, uh, I'm working from home. So I'm happy to field, um, you know, new inquiries from you guys directly. You can just email me at um, Alec, A-L-E-C, period, Valencia, V-A-L-E-N-C-I-A, at Rakuten.com. And that's my direct line of contact. So if you guys want to send me an email, um, you know, we can set up a call, get in a, a web meeting and, you know, review your specific case and talk about, you know, selling in Rakuten. That's awesome. Uh, final thing I like to ask guests on the episode is uh, hoping, hoping you're a reader, but uh, what is your favorite book and why? Oh, man, I think it probably has to be The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. Um, this is a book that I came in contact with a number of years ago when I was still fairly young. I think I was in middle school, junior high. And, um, you know, I just had this really great curiosity about war. And, you know, I think the type of, um, you know, changes that, that we go through as, as, as humans, you know, during that time of conflict. And specifically within, you know, Vietnam War, I did have some family that served in Vietnam, um, as well as some, you know, uh, family friends that did serve as well. And so, that was always a really interesting, um, you know, bit of history for me growing up, really understanding that conflict, understanding sort of the politics and uh, some of the under, you know, maybe ulterior motives of that war. And so, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting book. You know, Tim O'Brien, um, he did serve, you know, within Vietnam. And um, it's basically just a really fascinating story. Um, people have called it, you know, probably one of the more truer war, war stories. And that it's just collections, you know, of his experiences, the people that he served with. Um, really done in an amazing way. Some of the stories are very surreal. Um, other stories are a bit more factual in how they're presented, but I think it's a, it's an awesome read and really understanding of kind of our humanity. And it, it's a book that, you know, I'm also kind of returning to in a lot of ways right now. And that I think, you know, we're, we're kind of in a really interesting situation where, um, you know, we're isolated as a country and, you know, what are ways that we can empower each other, ways that we can stay connected um, and, you know, I think start, start working towards, um, you know, the next stage of this and, and getting through it. But yeah, that's just a really powerful book that I've read. And he has a whole series of books that he's written um, about Vietnam, about that conflict. And uh, yeah, I would highly recommend if anyone's interested in, you know, not just a story of, um, you know, warfare, but also of, uh, you know, brotherhood and, um, you know, humanity. Absolutely. So it's The Things They Carry by Tim O'Brien. Right. The Things They Carried. And the author is Tim O'Brien. All right. Um, thank you so much for your time. I, I, I look forward to hopefully having you again as a guest on this episode, on this show. Yeah, a lot, of, lot, of, lot to discuss. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to talk a bit more of certain, uh, certain aspects of the marketplace or, you know, if there's a, a certain theme that you want to talk about, absolutely. You, you know where to reach me. So <laughs> I'm Sounds not going good. anywhere. <laughs> Sounds good. Be good. Awesome. Thank you, Carlos. Liked what you heard and want to stay connected? Join our Facebook group or find me anywhere on social media at Wizards of Amazon or text the word Amazon to 69922.